So, uh, I hear that you've been canning. I'm, I'm yes, and, and and you know that's something. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we have it scheduled for. Well, we don't have it scheduled, but I think that's something I want to talk about on one of the off the leashes about your your methodology for canning. What what you choose to can and and you know how long you can go if you. I mean, you you can just for practical reasons so that. Yeah, you 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 make a certain amount of food, and then you have it ready made for a while. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm cooking for one for the most part. So when I when I come home, if I make a big old pot of soup, because I'm I'm not gonna make like one quart of soup. I mean, that's just not gonna happen. You don't do that with homemade soup. <laughs> I'm gonna make probably a couple gallons at a time, and I can I can or probably nurse. I I could probably I could probably nurse uh, a couple gallons myself over over a period of a week, taking it to work and having it when I come home. But um, I th- this last batch I made cabbage soup. What was it? Uh, just a couple nights ago, and I I did probably about four, maybe five gallons, something like that, roughly, approximately. Oh, it looks so. Good. I saw the pictures. Yeah. Oh, it was very good, very good. So by the by the time I got around to canning it yesterday, I was able to get 14 quarts out of it, and I still had some for dinner last night and to take to work with me this this morning. But uh, yeah, the the nice thing about it is the the, the canner that I have, I, I actually have two of them, uh, two pressure canners. One will do, uh, well, they'll, they'll both do seven quarts at a time. So that's how I was able to get the 14 quarts at the same time. But one is taller, so I can I can do. What was it? I think sixteen or eighteen of the regular mouth pint jars at a time. So if if you're doing stuff like, uh, let's say you're you're making, uh, you're doing a pork roast or, or beef roast for that matter, you can uh, you can do put that in the quart jars and do sixteen or eighteen of them at a time. That that that's pretty darn good. You can it's pretty efficient. You can knock that out. And if you have uh, if you have both going at the same time, you can get some 24 ounces in there, some quarts of the chicken, beef, or pork, or you can uh, uh, just do like another eight or nine pints. And you can save a lot of money because you could buy in bulk, right? So yeah, you can yeah, cook it all up at once. And where, how how do you store your cans? Yeah, you just a uh, refrigerator. Or? Well, technically it's jars, uh, but what I do jars, is so sorry. I, yeah, I have a little pantry down in the basement. The basement stays pretty cool because, well, it's 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 Michigan. It's I Michigan, think in the summertime, right. in the summertime, the basement might get up to about sixty degrees, which really isn't that bad. Uh, if if I do need to seek refuge from the warmer weather, I can always go down there and do it. Even when it gets in the eighties and nineties, it'll stay relatively cool down there. But uh, yeah, I just put it on shelves down there and keep it out of the direct sunlight. But what's really nice is I can come home from work if I don't feel like cooking a full meal. I can just go grab a, a jar of soup or a jar of stew, whatever that I have on there. Just pull it off the shelf, go and reheat it. Uh, it's really good for hunting and camping. Uh, when, when I go deer hunting, if I take if I go out in the camper, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time cooking up meals. So it's a lot easier to have a jar of uh, of uh, roast pork. And then another jar of my potatoes, carrots, celery, and oh, and, and all that stuff in the in the uh, Why in the are you doing this mix. To me, man? I'm hungry, and now I'm hungrier. It's going to be harder to get through the show. And if you saw the pictures, they're they're great. Well, I I just uh, ate, so I'm fine. So, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good great. I'm you. glad for you. <laughs> I'm really glad for you. Uh, we, we really, I think, uh, may, maybe, I don't know, maybe next week or, or, you know, if, if you think about it, you know, think about what you want to present and let's do a, an off the leash segment on, on, on strategic, maybe strategic canning and jarring, like not just for your immediate use, but how would you go about it if you were canning and jarring for building up uh, supply to, to get through an SHTF situation? If I would, if I was concerned about bugging out, I probably wouldn't be using the the glass mason jars. I would probably be uh, going with canned goods. Save, save, save it, 
Save it for the next show, man. Save it for the next This is a teaser. This is to get people to come back next week. Tell all your friends. Everybody, you know, the Super Bowl is next Sunday. Not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. But screw that. The following ne next Thursday, we're going to be talking about lose jugs, basically. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we get to do super, that. Super, I know people are super bowls of, that. yeah, super bowls of stew. There you go, super bowls of stew. Don't worry about the super bowl. Super, well, actually, I am going to worry about the super bowl because you know, you know, I have a vested interest in the super bowl this year, right? No, what, what's going on? The, the, the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, you've seen my posts. Come on, they got tickets. The Philadelphia Eagles are going to the super bowl, baby. How how they get tickets? They're, they're playing in the game. I've been following them for 40 years. This is only the third Super Bowl that they've gone to. They lost the other two. So so let's hope that – I'm hoping that they win this year, and then I can just say, okay, that's enough. Okay, I did it. I could put the whole football thing behind me. And, you know, I, I, I could stop here an anarchist screaming at me that I'm a statist because I watch football. But I will be watching the Super Bowl fight me. I guess we should start the show. What do you think? Is that enough of a warm up? Yeah, that's enough banter. Let's ban. Let, hey, let's... I'm I'm getting feedback. You're getting feedback right now. Yeah, I'm I'm hearing myself in the echo. Okay, it just started audience. a minute ago. Let's see. Anybody listening? Do you hear? How does Lou sound? How does Lou sound? See if uh, sometimes what you'll you'll hear an echo, but it's not going out. So I don't know. But I'll wait till somebody uh, somebody gets back on me on that. Do you hear the the banter the 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 feedback right now? Uh, let's see. Nope, I'm not getting any. Okay, so not sure what's going on there, but I'm gonna push forward. We're gonna get to our first segment, and this is the least favorite segment of the show. Our course of association shortening the leash on their pets. We cover stories of the state. The government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in shortening the leash on those they presume to rule. Welcome to a shorter leash. This is the shorter leash segment of the show, and gonna talk about. Uh, I you saw the, the the different stories that that I've selected for shorter leash. If you see something that you think is more interesting to talk about, then we can cut this one short or, or we can talk longer on this. Uh, this is, uh, this is a story that, uh, uh, Congress has approvals, which are below 30%, but uh, okay. Now, now, now you mean they're up to 30%? <laughs> yeah. They, they're below 30%. I, 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 very, very below. I mean, there are times when it's like 16%. It's like really, really yeah. freaking low. Yeah. They're, they're doing good around 10%. So, but that, anyway, that that's a good day for them. Hey, look, man, we, we're in double digits this week. Yay. And, Yay. and you know, you, you have this climate of, of absolute like hatred for, for everybody, you know, the progressives are the, the, you know, the, their their chairman Mao that's going to slaughter everyone, and the conservatives are Hitler that's going to slaughter everyone, and yet, with all that said and done, out of uh, I think it's four hundred and thirty five four hundred thirty five House seats, uh, yes, and, and and they're up for election every two years. Of them, only about forty some are actually competitive. So that means about ten percent of the U.S. House races are competitive this is where you get the title for the show which is NIMBY it's it's not in my backyard I hate Congress but you know what I'm gonna vote for my Congress member because my Congress member is different it's uh I I mean this this to me when I see this I mean I mean how do you how do you react to and this isn't new news because this is this has been going on for quite a while but to me, it's it's somewhat new in the sense that the numbers aren't significantly changing, even though the polarization, the what looks like on the surface, the polarization is only increasing. What does this tell you, Lou? This is a long-term pattern. It's it is absolutely not new at all. Generally, the the incumbency rate in a in any election is 
going to be 90 percent uh up to like even up to 95 percent but it goes between 90 uh, 90 and 95 percent of the incumbents or recidivists, whatever term you choose to use, I'd they will be reelected. Yes. Yeah. And when we're using that 10 percent term, we're not saying 10 percent are going to lose. We're saying that's 10 percent that are competitive. I don't know how many of them are going to yeah. actually lose. We're only talking about 10 percent being competitive. That's that's the reality that you're dealing with. So do you really believe that you live in a representative, quote unquote, democracy. Do you? Think oh no, I, I haven't believed that since I was a child. Not you. I, I know you. I'm not talking to anybody that uh, might be listening out there. And hopefully, we got some folks listening out there that are that are not already uh, uh, rejecting the whole course of enterprise model. But with these types of numbers, do you really believe that you live in a system that is allowing for individuals to rise and to make their case for why it is that they would be a better representative for you and that you have a, a pretty good free choice to determine which representative you want chosen for you. Do you really believe that's, that's actually true when you see these types of numbers, when you see in, in times where Congress, I, I mean, when was the last time that Congress had favorable approval? approval ratings you know what i'm gonna google it maybe you can google it we'll see who gets there first last time congress had okay google when did congress oh. have favorable approval ratings last let's see what they say what's they say what they say <laughs> google cannot find this <laughs> google shows no records <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm looking at their numbers in uh, September 13th, 2017, 16%. September, May 9th, March 9th, 2016, 13%. People fundamentally do not approve of Congress and they haven't forever. And yet um, they feel like they're in a representative democracy. I, I just think that. Republic. It, it's a right. republic. Well, you yeah, hear representative that, that democracy. You are? I'm echoing again. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what to do about it. I, Sorry. You're going to have to. Okay. I, I just won't talk because I want to avoid that. No, I'm kidding. I'll, I'll talk. I'll just. <laughs> it, it keeps going in and out. Uh, let, let me ask one more time because I may have asked it wrong. Okay, Google. When was the last time that Congress had favor, favorable approval ratings? Okay. What did it say? Hey. Uh, well, it, one is not talking, uh, but it, it's just taking taking me to the the same polls that you were looking at. Oh, so yeah, it's it's not it. The data does not compute. If you found okay, if you ask Sophia the robot this question, you could probably destroy her tiny little AI brain because it Sophia. would be like right. <laughs> Does not compute. Does not compute. Does not compute. And her and her head would explode. But but meanwhile, uh, everybody is ramping up for the 2018 election. Everybody is getting ready to pour in their resources, their money, their blood, sweat, and tears to to what this time get it right. I've got my meme generator all set up. I, I quite frankly, I'm, I'm, I have absolutely no cares about the 2018 election. I see that as a distraction um, of the 2020 mean me more. I mean, uh, election. It is. You know what? You're right. It is a it is a deviation from the 2020 meme production model. That's yes. what it is. Because there there is a very successful 2020 when you have John Kerry recently announced that he is considering. Well, I don't know if he officially announced, but uh, he's consider he's putting his feelers out. I think is what's really going on. That, that I'm really excited running. about the. I'm really excited about the 2020 LP presidential ticket. Weld and sessions. <laughs> Weld and all oh, that's the weld sessions ticket. That's right. Yes. Yeah. It's like you know he you know it's it's Weld's turn. You know. Yeah. He was the vice and, presidential and, and, nominee. And who it's else represents turn. libertarian values better than Jeff Sessions? Well, I mean, Jeff Sessions is. Uh, uh, he's every is, as good as Wayne Allen Root. He's for Bob religious Barr, freedom. Gary Johnson. He's for religious freedom. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Probably just for well, Christians, though. 
probably. Well, Gary Johnson, he's uh, he's a little bit friendlier on the on the cannabis issue, but anyway. But, but you will have I'm, to I'm bake sh- that freaking cake. Yeah. Gary will make you bake the cake. So uh, I, I guess the bottom line of this story, I don't, I don't even know if we, maybe we can go to, to, the, to the second story on this, but uh, the, the, the bottom line here is you've got, you've got approvals. I mean, I said below 30% just to be generous. You're really talking 15, 13, 16%. And it's been that way for years and years and years and years. No, it's years. not. It was, it was down at eight for years and years and years. If it's up to 15, that's, that's a jump. Oh, that, party hard. Pe- party hard. Yeah, pe- People are like feeling the burn or something like that. They're feeling the Johnson. I don't know. But anyway, uh, the, the thing here is the, uh, as you mentioned, this is nothing new. The, these numbers are, pretty much continuous. Uh, there might be a little fluctuation in the approval rating of, of Congress, but what winds up happening is you have all these people saying, throw the bums out except for my bum. My bum's a good bum. Right. And quite frankly, I think I, I think of the voter as somebody that's singing karaoke because they, they, they're reading the lines and the chorus says, throw the bums out. And the only reason they're saying it is because the line shows up on the screen. It highlights and everything else. And and, and all these off-key status are, are just singing the song that they're supposed to sing. Um, they're, they're not even taking into account of how the bums got in there in the first place. And that's because they voted. And it's been a never-ending succession of new bums to replace the old bums. And... How how could I put it? Um, they're afraid of a bum free society. You don't they, want they a bum free society. That's right. They 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 can't imagine a world without bums telling them what to do. It's it's as if if you don't have a Nancy Pelosi or Paul Ryan, a Trump or Obama, a Reid or McConnell telling you how to live your life and how to do things, uh, you're just going to lose your mind and do stupid stuff and and. The, the world's going to start turning the other way. Uh, it will deflate. It will become flat. And the turtle will be like, hey, you need to pump that thing back up because I can't carry this floppy thing. Uh, but, and yeah, it's yeah, but, it's, it, but look, it's, it's, it's a cyclical death spiral. Without the bums, who would hire their cousin, who would overpay their cousin's road building crew to build the roads? Who would do that? I mean, w- w- without Chuck Schumer, who would, would say, I almost ate a Tide Pod? <laughs> I I don't know if that's true, though. I've never seen that verified. Is that actually, did he actually, I, I mean, what we're referring to, folks, is Chuck Schumer put out this thing. It's a, it, I, I mean, the, the well, I don't want to bury. I the article's from like 2012 lead. or something like that. I, oh, I, I was, was going to bury on, the on lead and I oh, was okay. going to do what you did on Freedom Fiends. I was going to. I was gonna set oh. it up, and you just totally, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, screwed the pooch is what you did. So, I only get it right on my show. So this this crazy old lady is, uh, oh, oh, I see. This is your show too. So this crazy old lady, she uh, she's uh, writing a complaint. You know, you gotta you gotta ban the 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 Tide Pods and and Chuck Schumer because they're eating them, and you gotta you gotta you gotta put them in safe spaces. And Chuck Schumer's like, "Yeah, man, they look like candy. I saw them on a desk, and I was like, I wanted to eat them." And then you know the punchline is, "No, no, this didn't just happen. This was in 2012." So, but that's, yeah, but without but without Chuck Schumer, which politicians would eat Tide Pods? Probably half of them. I think that most of them probably already have. So. <laughs> yeah. Gonna. I think there's some glue sniffing and some Tide Pod eating going on with that crew. You you almost have to have something fundamentally wrong with your brain to imagine. You wake up in the morning and you head to a place where you know that you could you could you could press a button that 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 passes something called legislation that will will attempt to to control and monitor 435 million people you gotta have some fundamental level of insanity to believe that there's nothing wrong with that do you think the brown dose swilling tide pod chomping morons out there are gonna stop eating laundry detergent because some idiot politicians scribbled some words on paper i mean come on those of you out there they're still buying into this notion that scribbling words on paper makes stuff happen oh come on pull your heads out of your schumers 
Or should I say, yeah, yeah. No, no. I just pictured a, I'll, I'll a come black up with market one. Tide Pod market. A black market, a Tide Pod, pod black market emerging. You get down to, you know, third in Maine and, you know, you meet Vinny and you're like, yo, well, Vinny, yo, two, two. Yo, man, two, man, don't, don't, no, just take it. Just go, 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 go. Yeah, I no, just, wait, exchange. just wait till you see some guy walk around with a trench coat in the summertime. He pulls it open, and he's got Tide Pods hanging from the sides of the trench coat. He says, I got Tide Pods. I got the generic off-brand <laughs> stuff. Come get it. I got a little Febreze here. First one's free. <laughs> yeah. Buy three buy three Tide Pods. Get a free bounce sheet with it, for God's sakes. But <laughs> I, I'm going going back to this, this whole death, the cyclical death spiral, it's it, it's it it's really it's amazing. It's really amazing when election time comes up. You can you can make up a bingo card with all the slogans, and if, if you paid attention in the last election, or if you started writing writing the slogans down in the last election, you could probably get a coverall within like the I don't know probably the first week or two of of the very beginning of the campaign season because they're gonna. They're going to start off with, uh, we're going to take back our government, and we're going to vote those bums out, and then it's going to devolve into, well, if you a, a vote for so and so is actually a vote for somebody else, because you didn't vote for my guy. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we saw that and, in 2016, right? Yeah, and then you can then the the free space will be, well, a vote for a third party is a wasted vote. No, any vote given to a politician is a wasted vote, and you if, if you give it to some meaningless parasite. <laughs> Yeah, you deserve you deserve to lose it. Yeah, and on that note, I think we're just going to head right on over to the we're going to get to the longer lease segment, and uh, hopefully we can talk about a couple stories here. We have I'm going to talk about a towel exit. Do you know anything about a towel exit? I coined the phrase. It's uh, kind of like Brexit. Yeah, yeah, I coined the phrase because, uh, and 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 I want to talk about the context of of how this stuff is emerging more and more. This, this, it's 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 regionalism, it's nationalism, and uh, I'm not a nationalist, but uh, well, well, we'll talk a little bit about that, and also um, we may get to talk about the Virginia Senate uh, giving you some more gun permissions, and that's a good thing. Uh, Yay! Yeah. I'm free. I got permission. <laughs> yeah, I got permission. So. We're gonna we're gonna we're we're going to the longer leash, folks. That means get ready, folks. Get ready, folks, because you get to walk out a little bit further from your master. How are coercive associations lengthening the leash on their pets? We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association plotting to or succeeding in lengthening the leash on those they presume to rule. And that is my wife that does the voiceover, and uh, I just want to say, uh, subjectively speaking, she's probably the best voiceover artist of all time. I'm just going to put that out there and say that. So, so this 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 story, and and you, I'm assuming you looked at some of these stories and glossed through them, and have a a, a, a totally uh, you're going to set the world on fire with insight and awe when I relate this story, right? If you say so. <laughs> okay, so Tom Parfit of the Express UK decided to write an alleged straight news piece. Uh, alleged straight news piece. And be very careful because this is what these folks do all the time. Uh, with a rather alarming title. But the title immediately made me cheer for the exact opposite result. His uh, Well, it was the exact opposite role, result his article was intending to to, 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 to produce. And his headline is how Italian elections could devastate Brussels and tear Europe apart. Now I ask you, is that not a delicious sentence? <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. And, and the original <laughs> article is posted at fear porn hub. Fear porn hub. Yes. But, yeah. but it's like to me, I mean, it, it's express UK, but it is, it's, it's fear porn hub, but not to me. It's not fear porn hub. To me, it's just porn hub. Yeah, Wait, hold on. It, it, is... it is. <laughs> it, it's kind of like the. It's kind of like this past weekend when the government shut down. The Republicans are like, "Oh my God, the non-essential parts of government are going to fall down. We're going to die." <laughs> and 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 you got Chuck Schumer going out. So you got the Democrats saying, "Shut it down." Yeah, shut it down. Great, super. But now that what they did is they shut down. 
ten uh, percent of the government, uh, and uh, just ten percent, folks. That's that's what a shutdown kill- is at most. Ten percent. All the Killy parts were still functioning, the Surveilly parts, the Robbie right. parts, yes. the extortion parts, the yeah. spying parts. Yeah, the parts that get the, shut down are the Surfy parts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the Snoopy parts. The, They're still going. <laughs> there, there's no problem with them. The yeah. Feely parts at the at the airport. Oh, yeah, the Feely parts. There's, yeah. That's a good job. That's a good gig if you can land it, you know. That's a, that's Make a your money. Gig. Make your money hand over fist. Right. Or with your fist. Never mind. I'm not going to go there. That would, that would be inappropriate. But it involved a fist. And I'll let you use your imagination on that if you're thinking about frisking. So this is uh, the, 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 the title that, that, that to me, I mean, he, this is intended to make you deathly afraid. And what are you supposed to be afraid of? You're supposed to be afraid of any type of, I'm going to say, I mean, it is a form of tribalism, I think, that we're talking about here, but it's the wrong kind of tribalism because it's too small a tribalism, and it goes against the large tribe that they want Europe to start identifying with. Mm-hmm. Well, what it comes down to is that the, the European Union has been around for uh, since the early to mid-90s, roughly. and I so, remember when they it, first it, formed it. Yeah, uh, and I, I lived over there before it existed. As a matter of fact, I, I lived in Germany when there was still an East Germany and a West Germany, so it was two separate Germanys, and you had the Soviet Union, and you had, uh, you you had, had an all East the, German the uh, American was... conservative border controls Did, didn't... over between Czechoslovakia and West Germany, East Germany and West Germany, and so on. Uh, but anyway. Didn't, didn't you have an East German girlfriend? What was his name? <laughs> Her, her name that, was right? Paul. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she's she's a little bit chunky and not real bright, but I feel really awkward at this moment. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah, but she had she had uh she had ears like the handlebars on a bike. So anyway, wow. So they're they're making they're making all this fear about oh my god there'll be no European Union and this is a little bit more realistic of uh of fear porn than the whole net neutrality thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because it's it's been a number of years since there hasn't been a European Union. But if you look at at all the the whining and complaining about, oh, my God, there's not going to be net neutrality. Things are going to go back to how it was literally just two years ago when none of this stuff was happening that we're talking about. Uh, (laughs) Well, the same thing's going to happen if the European Union explodes. And when you have people that... Are of the mind that you should that you should take these these countries and put them together. And, and how many how many separate nations are in the European Union? Was it like thirteen or something like that? So uh, let, let's just say that it was European thirteen colonies, something like that. Yeah, for the sake of argument, let's just say that it was thirteen. So you have thirteen separate Random nations, number. and you combine them all together under one centralized governing thing. And eventually, as time goes on the central government over the 13 separate nations, uh, the, the lines start to blur, and all of a sudden you no longer have 13 separate nations, but you have more like 13 provinces in this one super nation. And then, the but province, it, and then if you're one of the folks that lives in one of the provinces that says, hey, maybe we should be our own nation again, then now you're a terrorist, you're an extremist, you're a nationalist, yeah. you're a... I, Let's let's say a handful of those separate nations decide. You know what? We're we're not really happy with this. We don't like the taxes. Realities. We don't like the we don't like the rules that are being set up out of uh, out of the the central location uh, in, in Brussels. And they say, you know what? Maybe we're just going to go back to being our our own separate nations, or or maybe we're going to form a little confederacy of of our separate nations. Random here. random uh, term, by the way, just random. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll call it the Confederate States of uh, Europe. Of Europe, that's a good idea. That's yeah. good. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, is it is it possible that this that the leaders and well, actually, you have one leader that's really driving the driving force behind it, but. Uh, him and his minions, they decide, you know what? We don't think that you should be able to leave and, and go get your own little confederacy of uh, European states. It'd so what really, we're going to do... It'd be really bad for business. 
Yeah. So what they're going to do is they're going to have blockades put around the ports of those of those countries, and and who knows, they might even move troops in there and and force them back into the European Union. But I mean, if if, if they're well, going to be treasonous, terrible. that sounds terrible. Yeah, and if they're going if they're going to be treasonous to their country of the European Union, then they they probably deserve it. Yeah, and if they don't like it, they can move to America, you know, or something. Yeah. Or well, yeah, Somalia? maybe we're sending them to Somalia too. <laughs> we're sending everyone they to could, Somalia. Well, for for Americans, you you have a simple choice. You can stay in America and be a victim of domestic policy, or you can go somewhere else and be a victim of foreign policy. So, uh, which poison do you prefer? Yeah. Well, I mean, how do you like your hemlock? <laughs> If you're really good at dodging drones, you're probably going to pick the foreign policy because, you know, you probably have a better chance than, you know, the, the road it, pirate uh, knocking on your door methodology. Well, the dodging drone strikes is kind of a crapshoot, especially if you live in a shithole. But anyway, <laughs> the... Uh, so I, you have you have to look at the at the value of having the European Union. Uh, what it does is when you have all these all these separate nations working together like that, they can defend against foreign invasion. You know, like let's say the let's say the Ruskies decide that they want to invade and and they want to go into Western Europe. Well, when you have all these all these nations put together, not to mention you can regulate trade amongst the several amongst the several nations there. Yeah. And it's- uh, it's it, it not will going to heavily them, favor Germany and France. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it will also keep them from going to war to, with each other. Yeah. You know, because what if, uh, what Dude, if Germany and France You're selling me France on the European are, Union now. Yeah. Well, what if Germany and France, they, if they have some uh, territorial arguments, you know, similar to what uh, Michigan and Ohio had over Toledo back in, uh, I believe, the early 1800s, mid-1800s, something like that. But anyway... I mean, you you can eliminate these disputes, and you know what? I mean, quite frankly, if if you have a really good uh, magic parchment for this European Union, you can you can really make something for the rest of the world to look at and try to emulate. And as a matter of fact, if 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 you think that stopping war between these European nations or even American nations, for that matter, and ensuring that the that there is fair trade amongst the states and uh, amongst these nation states. I mean, why why not why not take that show on the road and why not have like one big giant worldwide union where well, all nations are? It, why half-ass it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But but here's the thing. It, it, if this is good for stopping war amongst the 13 nations of the European Union, then why why not expand it to all 100 and however many nations that there are? I mean, if you can eliminate war and, and we want to eliminate war. Do you want war, Paul? Do you want to eliminate war? No, I don't. I love war and I hate roads. So I'm probably not your target audience. Are you, are you going to make me dip into my march allotment? Play along here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, so, I I love I hate war. I, I okay. love the children. All right, and 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 you want fair trade to to be going on? You don't want the, you don't want oh, these yeah. tariffs and these trade yeah, wars. I, going I don't on. want I don't want the greedy corporatists to be able to totally bilk us, uh, and and you know not not be regulated uh, in some sort of uniform way. Yeah, and I. And, and just that is going it's just going to provide you protection all the way around the world instead of just in your little corner of it so why not take this european union or this uh this uh constitutional republic and, and make it a single one because quite frankly world government is a logical conclusion it is it is it, it, it and and i mean I, I i know you're being facetious but you're being real and and this is uh, well what i'm seeing I'm here ser- I'm serious that it's a logical conclusion, but I'm being facetious about yeah, it being an, a, an answer. Yeah, absolutely. But what you're saying, it, well, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be like that woman interviewing Jordan Peterson saying. So what you're saying then is you hate children. No. Uh, what 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 you're saying is uh, if if you actually take the arguments that they use that the United States used to keep the union together that the European or to create using, or to create the union or to, right or to create well yeah well, we, we, well when they initially created the union there was a conf- 
uh, uh, the Articles of Confederation were very loose. I mean, honestly, it was like, it was just like, okay, you know, if we have some, you know, if we need some mitigation and we have some big, massive disaster or major threat, we can come together. That was about the extent of the Articles of Confederation. And then they're like, dudes, you know, uh, I mean, maybe I'm deviating here, but uh, the, 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 the Constitution did not come about through like, yeah, man, we want more freedom. We need a document that makes it clear that we're more free. No, what's, what was happening was the state legislatures were, were hammering their citizens with taxes. And the citizens were rising up and marching on the state legislatures. So the state legislatures were saying, we need protection. If you really want to think about it this way, the state, the individual state political classes recognized that they needed a national authority to protect them from their own quote-unquote citizens. That's why the Constitution came into being, and that's what the European Union is about. But they'll use Well, let's also remember, let's also remember that uh, when the Constitution was uh, was uh, proposed in 1787, when the, when the conspirators got together, um, the, they had the, been— The counter-revolutionaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the common man had been had not had a strong central government controlling and taxing him to death for quite some time, and they lamented that loss of a strong central authority to come abuse them and raise armies. And they yeah. said, "Yeah, I, we, we need this again. We we feel unloved. It's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a abused you know I mean? spouse saved, that gets in a saved, healthy relationship." I've been saving up the Vaseline, and nobody's showing up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> come on, guys. It's here. It's ready for you. So they're like, hey, Constitution, Constitution it is. But what what's happening, like, with it, it with 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 this I Italian movie, so there's this the MS five is 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 uh is rising in the polls in Italy and they're 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 anti EU. Uh and I believe that, you know, you're seeing these movements, it's it's not just that, you know, it's not the Italy level, it's not the nation level. It, you look at what's happened in Catalonia. Catalonia is not the only region that's chafing at the bit to disentangle itself from the burden of larger coercive enterprise models. Because what's happening is more and more the there there I you you could ostensibly argue, and I don't think that it's necessarily right, but but you you could you the numbers could be fudged a lot more easier for people to look and say, oh no, we're getting a net gain from being part of a larger coercive association. But now it's harder and harder to find to hide the fact that large scale coercive associations are costing more and more and they're offering less and less benefits and people are like they they don't want to pay anymore. It's like, you know, your services are crap. And uh, we, 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 we can actually provide our own services for a lot cheaper. And I mean, the Italians, they're not moving for anarchy. They're not moving for statelessness, but they're certainly recognizing that the large scale model is not working. That's why this is in the longer leash category, because some folks have figured out that the larger scale stuff isn't working. Yeah. Well, what I leash. fear is that their whole intention is, their whole intention is just to throw the bums out and put new bums in office because that's probably what's going to happen. Well, what happens when you have a longer leash? It's just, you know, we're going to go through this theme again and again and again on this show. The longer leash model is that you, <clears throat> you have this illusion that you're, you know, you're, you're walking a little bit further away from Masta, but Masta still has a leash. Masta can pull that leash back anytime Masta wants. And meanwhile, what often happens is while you may have a longer leash, Massa behind you has connected another leash to your back legs that you're not even aware of. So you're actually more trapped than you were. And so, I mean, what are the Italians going to end up with? What's this group going to represent? If, if, if at the local level, if, if a large scale coercive model does not interfere with my life as much as the l l small scale coercive model, what does it really matter? And I have a feeling that what will be rising in Italy and a lot of these others, you know, nationalistic groups is you're going to actually get a lot. It's kind of what happened in America. What happened in America? You had, they, they didn't like the level of control that the King was trying to exert over them and they rebelled against it. And when 
They defeated the king, the new leaders, the new bums. They took more control over the lives of the people than the king ever had. So, yeah, they freed themselves from a larger scale model, but the smaller scale model actually exerted more control over the people than the larger scale model had. For a moment, I thought you were talking about this most recent election cycle. <laughs> <laughs> and I could be, right? I could be. So, yeah, um, I, I, I will, uh, I'm, I'm going to touch on a, a brief story just so we can have a laugh here. And then we'll get to the best part of the show, which is uh, off the leash. And, and that is, uh, woof, woof. I got this one for you because I thought that you would really enjoy this. The Virginia Senate is set to allow, this is my title. So this is my title. This is how I write the title. Virginia Senate set to allow the plebes to carry guns in churches. Their title, the State of State Face uh, media title, Virginia Senate passes bill to allow guns in churches. You see the difference there, folks? You see the difference? You see the mindset in whoever wrote, uh, wrote, wrote a title like that. They have, they, they, they really, they, 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 they have no problem uh, granting to this Virginia quote unquote authority, this imaginary right to decide whether or not you could carry a gun to church. But, but the Republican controlled Senate passed legislation that would allow people to carry uh, a guns in church. And now they're there, they're, but, but and it's a longer leash. And, the, and you know, this is the great, this is that longer leash. That's perfect. Where I said, you, you're a little bit further away from Masta, but meanwhile, Masta's uh, is actually connected another leash to your back legs. Cause they're the governor is a Democrat governor. Who's a totally rabid anti-gunner named Ralph Northam. And you can bet he's going to veto it. And even if it gets vetoed, it still, it gives these people in Virginia this illusion that somehow through the democratic process, they can hope to afford to beg their master for more rights. Whereas if you remove that myth, if you remove this, this notion that you could actually do it through, through, through political action, uh, people I think would be much more inclined to quickly and visibly demonstrate their absolute lack of care for any legislation that was passed. You know, the most effective way to shoot down legislation is to render it unenforceable. Yeah, I personally think um, it, it, it let me show a little bit of empathy for the folks that are excited over this newfound permission that they're excited about this longer leash. That they're not so, get. well, here's here's what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine that. Um, in your yard, you have a leash that you're tied to, and you on the other end of the yard, you have a open gate, and outside of that open gate is pure, absolute freedom. You can go bury and dig up bones anytime you want, chase all the squirrels you want, uh, go sniff all the butts you want. There's, and I love there's sniffing as butts. many bark parks as you can handle. So outside that open gate is freedom, but... You currently have the leash that you have. So you take six steps. You, you run six steps. And all of a sudden, you feel a jerk on your neck. And your, your back legs go underneath you. You're on your, you're on your back. You're on your butt because the leash stopped you. It, you're 100 feet away from that open gate because your leash is only six feet long. Now, with this new freedom... Your leash is seven feet long, so you get to take one more step before reaching the end of your leash, getting your your neck jerked and, and choked around, and falling on your ass. Seven steps now. You're closer to that open gate. If you only want to go six steps and you have seven, you feel free. Yes. Yeah. That seventh step is a doozy. Yeah, yeah, and not many people are even going to take that seven step. I, I know I, a long time ago I wrote. I was actually I was still in state even on state face mode when I wrote this. I wrote this 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 idea of a freedom box that uh, most people the the things that they do in their lives the the laws and the regulations are not going to fundamentally get in their way. 
the in 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 America, and I don't I, I won't speak for other countries, but I'll say in America, most people, the laws are not going to fundamentally get in their way. Uh, if if the minute that, for instance, if you if you want to own a business and you want to run a business, you immediately start to get a sense of the limits of your freedom. If you don't run a business, it's harder for you to do so. If you have any type of of I don't know I, I, ideals or uh, if if you for for whatever reason you come to say. I want to have more freedom to do what I want to do. It's a fundamental, passionate thing with me. Then you really are going to start to to come into you, you, so uh, to come up against that leash. You're going to experience the leash. And if you never experience the leash, the that seventh step. If you never experience the seventh step, then people, when they tell you that you're not really free in America, and you say, "Well, yes, I am." You know what? They're telling the truth, Lou. They're free. Because I'm proud to be an American. Right. And I don't need that seventh step. at least I know I'm leashed. I don't leashed. need that seventh step. But what's happening, fortunately, what's happening is because, and, and I will say that a lot of it has to do with technology, but it's a lot of it has to do with the technology that's emerging, that it's making, making it increasingly easier for for individuals and free associations to provide their own way, so to speak. Uh, so what's happening is the state has two things going on. One, it has a monetary system that requires it constantly has to bring in more stuff. This is why the economy has to continue to grow. It's not necessarily true that an economy must continue to grow. We have a debt-based economy. That's why it has to continue to grow. If you don't continue to grow the economy, then you're going to start to default on your loans because you have you. I mean, you're, a lot of your loans. You're just paying the interest rates just to you know just to, just to keep it from defaulting. So you have that thing going on. You know, America is like a form of uh, socialism, and it's it's a it's a self-contained system. It's beginning to to cannibalize itself. So it's running out of outside theft to gather. And now it needs to turn to you more and more. It needs to get more of your stuff to feed this bit, this ever widening, ever deepening black hole. And then on the other side, you have this emerging technologies that uh, the state has to stop. It has to stop you from being able to do things anonymously. It has to stop you from being self-reliant. So it's going to use... Uh, you know, fear tactics like, you know, the terrorists are going to take advantage of it. The drug dealers are going to take advantage of it. Criminals are going to be able to money launder. And it's going to have to write all these new rules and regulations that are going to start to interfere with your life more and more so that less and less people in America will feel free. It sounds like we're about to go into the next segment. Before, yeah. But before we go, before we go off the leash, uh, I still want to talk a little bit about being on the leash. Because this is going to be a transition for us. Um, when, when I hear people talk about going through exactly the things that you spoke about, trying to open a business and all the things that you have to do and, and how the KGB will come around and stop you if, if you do not have state-approved economic transactions. Uh, when, when they talk about how free they are, people that talk about living in the freest country in the world remind me of dogs that that brag about having the, the longest leash in the yard. And, it, and as one of my heroes, Frederick Douglass, once said, <laughs> when you attach a leash to your neighbor's ankle, do not be surprised when you find the other end attached to your own neck. So yes. it's time for us to go off I'm the gonna, leash. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the bump. I'm going to hit the, the off the leash bump. Let me get it here. Let me get it here. Here we go. Off wolf, the chain, wolf. yo. Off the leash. Wolf, wolf. Wolf. How are others enjoying lives that exist beyond the reach of the leash of the state, the government, the course of enterprise, the course of association? How, in other words, are people living off the leash and how might you join them? And that was my daughter that did that voiceover. And Lou, you didn't get to hear it. You gotta have to listen to the playback of the show and and here, what an awesome job she did. Daughter did a great job. If, I, if, I, ha I have heard it. Okay. And I've met your daughter, too. That's right. You have. You met her in person. You you met my daughter in person. So I I have, uh, and you know the stories I sent them to you. 
I have uh, something that I'm really excited about. I don't know. Do you know anything about microgrids? Not really. Did I've you, read. Uh, I've, I've gl- glanced through the article that you sent me. Uh, from the sounds of it, it, it sounds like the typical off the leash. Uh, story because it's talking about a solution to a problem. It's talking about a private solution to a government created problem. Yeah. Now, now, mind you, like like most of the technologies, even that I cover on iState, oh yeah, the governments are using these technologies. Like even the the U.S. military, they use microgrids for their for their their remote bases. Uh, but <laughs> microgrids can be used for for free association communities. So the, uh, a microgrid is essentially, it's a small power plant that is powered by usually, not necessarily uh, alternative renewable energy, but, but often alternative renewable energy, but it doesn't have to be. It could be, you know, you can use, you know, if, 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 you're, if, you, if you're near a stream, you can hook that up. But generally, how, how it's worked, or how how I would envision it, it working in these free association communities is uh, I am not I am I am against centralization in general I am against putting all my eggs in one basket I I like the the whack a mole approach I you know you have you put you you put all your you know your power in one source and if somebody's going to target you they can take you out easily but where microgrids really work in combination with you having your own power sources for your own homes is in is is empowering the the stuff that that yes that communities will want to use collectively so you know you have a, a shared school that people use so the microgrid would would power the shared school you might you might use the microgrid even if you had a business di- district that you built the microgrid might power the 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 business district but these these microgrids what's happening is they're they're coming into being for initially for two really big reasons one is in africa and other uh, where there's a lot of remote communities what they're finding is that instead of trying to connect them to the large scale grids uh you know the grid it's much easier to build a microgrid for them and give them power right there for their community than it is to try to connect them to, you know, run these huge power lines and uh, uh, and whatnot. And uh, uh, so, so necessity or uh, yeah, necessity is the mother of invention. And so these microgrids are beginning to emerge. I'm seeing more stories. Uh, Australia, I'm seeing a lot of these emerge. I'm seeing a lot of microgrids emerging in Africa. And of course, I'm seeing a lot of. Sadly, uh, the spark kind of sucks. It's the militaries that are using these microgrids for for remote locations but but i'm i'm excited about what microgrids can do for 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 any of us like you know down the road we get enough folks together when i when i say we i don't want you to say that there's our mouse in your pocket because i know you want to uh, don't mouse pocket me bro right so i'm talking about the general we people who would find a reason to want to be in a free association with one another, I mean the micro the microgrid is uh, it's a great way. E- even if initially, like I I would say for me, uh, the ideal communities that you're building these free association communities, you, you I think ideally eventually you want to have every home having their own source of power. But when you're setting up, the quickest and easiest and most inexpensive way to get things started is to set up a microgrid. And get everyone powered up uh, uh, pretty quickly, and then as then as you grow, then you, you know, people equip their own homes. Yeah, I live in a rural area, and there's not a lot of houses in, in this little community here. And most of the houses are are pretty close. I'd say, oh, I, I doubt that there's more than thirty houses here. To be honest, I mean, it's and, and that's probably a stretch in this little patch here. Now you get a little bit further out down the road, and and you have some more houses out there. But one of the things that we run into here, those of us that live in this area, is and I, I guess I was fortunate this past year I didn't have to deal with it much. But um, there's a tendency to get a lot of power outages in the the heavy duty storms that we get in the summertime because it's we're out in a remote area. The the uh, 
the grid, if you will, it, it, it's it's rather old. It, it's it's not current and up to date, and it takes uh, it takes a bit longer for the people in my area to get our power back when there is a power outage. And I think that if uh, if there was a some sort of a uh, way of getting power out of the river that goes near us or or maybe even throwing some solar in there or maybe some wind power, whatever it is. Or, or, or maybe maybe there's like some sort of Bitcoin mining thing that mines electricity. I don't know. If there's something that can create electricity and eliminate this or even – Bitcoin mining um, eats electricity; it doesn't produce it. But okay. Well, 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 well you mine electricity is is what I'm saying. Okay. You know, it, it's it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a Liberty Fest when somebody sets up a hotspot and they're they're mining for internet and putting it out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can have. Yeah. It. I mean, there are there are electric uh, power coin thingies that that people either are doing or talking about doing. And no, I don't mean the Venezuelan petro currency that's a <laughs> scam coin. Yeah. And I'm not for not referring to gov scam coin. But yeah. But yeah, El, yeah exactly. El Dogecoin. <laughs> yes, El, El, yeah, yeah. El Dogecoin. Yeah. But anyway, I just I eliminating the the time that it takes to get everything going back up or eliminating the power outages completely. Uh, not to mention if you can lower the cost of these people. And heck, what if uh, what if one of the people in the neighborhood is the one that's providing it? And what if he's got a way of doing this that it doesn't require much of his time? He's, you know, he and his family, they, they keep an eye on things, whatever. But it, it doesn't there's not a whole lot of work to go along with it because it's a, it's a smaller system. And it's, it, it's like, uh, are you familiar with uh, Google fiber? Yeah. Okay. So Google was wanted to put in a fiber optic cable to provide high speed internet and cable to people. And of course, a lot of the local, uh, cable cartels objected to that because that, yeah, because that would cut into them. And, and Google was going to pick up the cost of, of laying the fiber optic cable on their own. And but these are they they weren't gonna they weren't gonna allow that. The last thing in the world that they wanted was any competition, especially competent competition. So that they, they used uh, they used the guns of government to to cripple their competition. But as, if you as have, often happens. Yeah. So I just imagine if you had unrestricted competition where the where the only way that you could survive, the, the only way that you could be successful, the only way that you could be wealthy, wealthy is through actually earning it rather than being a rent seeking parasite. That would be terrible. That would be absolutely terrible because then I would have to actually work for it. I would have to. I would have to, my, you know, I, 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 I was, uh, I, I wrote something for, for someone recently and it was about greed and, uh, you know, everybody thinks that greed is bad. And, and I said, greed is good. Where greed is a problem is where one way or another that greed does not have to face the consequences of its actions. When you have government involved in the marketplace, greed does not have to face the consequence of its actions. It doesn't have to provide the best product or service because it's protected by the government. If I am greedy and I want to make money and I don't have a safety net and I don't have the government protecting me from competitors, my greed is going to 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 necessitate that I create a product or service that somebody actually wants and is actually willing to pay for. And if, if they're willing to pay for it at a price that I can make a profit, then I can provide the service. And clearly if they're, if they're willing to pay for it, it's a service that the market honestly wants. My greed is serving others, but where my yeah. greed is on is, is, is as again, it, it's, I'm not suffering the consequences of bad decisions then my greed is no longer serving. It's just totally dis- destroying and uh, consuming. In a truly free market, the only way to become wealthy or the only way to succeed is to satisfy your customers. So in that regard, as F.A. Hayek had, had put it, greed, I'm sorry, capitalism renders greed completely harmless. Right. If you accept his 
notion of the word capitalism, but that's another story altogether. Well, Hay- Hayek was, we, we won't fight uh, he was an the Austrian. Word capitalism. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Hayek, but I'm just saying. Hayek was an Austrian. He he wasn't right. he wasn't one of those dirty. But communists. I know I know that you triggered a bunch. Of, you you probably triggered a few people with the word capitalism because some people do not read that word the way that other people do. I just actually I recorded Seeds of Liberty uh, with Well uh, Feinstein. <laughs> and we actually talked about this. We talked about the word capitalism and how people use it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is that uh, microgrids. Uh, it's just another emerging technology that that tilts the balance of i mean i am all about power i'm all and for me power is simply the ability to uh affect to to influence action whether it's your own or others and this or to run your devices (laughs) no no that's not how i i'm I'm terming power here but you're right that is that is that is a, a use of the word power uh but this is a technology that is uh, it's tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations. It allows them to successfully and efficiently in a, in a, in a very cost effective way, it allows them to provide for themselves a basic necessity well, within our civilized, within our civilization. I'll say, I don't, I mean, we didn't have electric power for millennia and, 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 you know, human, the human race is still here. But, but within the framework of where we're right now, electricity is a necessity. And this enables them. It gives them that choice. It gives them a choice that the government that wants you on their large-scale centralized system really doesn't want to see emerge. Nope, not one bit. Not one bit. I think on that note, I, I think we've, uh, we've, we've, we've accomplished the task here. We have we have gone the hour, and uh, that was, I, I I I'm I'm glad we end with off the leash because <laughs> we start with that shorter leash stuff, and that stuff is depressing. And if you go to iStake.tv, you're not going to be overwhelmed with fear porn. You're gonna you're gonna there's there's some things to pay attention to, some things that might be a little fearful, but you're not going to be overwhelmed with fear porn. And hopefully, you Lou, you're going to iStake.tv and you're checking out the articles and. And seeing what's up there and seeing what what's happening. So I keep my sanity. That's that's how you got to do it. That's how you you got to do it. Oh oh, by the way, I missed what Brandon said. Brandon uh, said that you sound fine. <laughs> so that was a way back, and I I missed that comment. So I want to thank everybody that joined us here, and uh, uh, thank uh, thank Lou Sander and and myself, Paul Gordon, for being on. The uh, on is daily Thursday. We'll be back next Thursday, on, unless of course uh, uh, the sweet meteor of death finally arrives. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel, uh, right here on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. Be sure you check out the archive for the show. Maybe by somewhere by tomorrow morning, the archive of the show it will include the Facebook video the YouTube video, as well as the audio. And I am working, Lou, on on f- joining maybe some sort of RSS network or something because I really want to start to build up our, our audio audience. And uh, uh, I'll be working on that. But you can get the audio file if you go to uh, isdaily.live. That takes you to the archive page on iState.tv. Yeah, I have all these domain names to make it easy for you. You know, you go to is headlines, you go to headlines you may have missed. And if you go to isdaily.live, you get all the archives. Do you have any last remarks before we uh, punch this puppy in the head and put the show to bed? Amazingly enough, with all the attempts to crush innovation and crush freedom itself, the the, the, the taste of freedom, the, the, the yearning for freedom, even if people don't realize that they have it, it, it grows and it grows. And, and, the, and the, more that, the more that freedom is crushed, the more the, the more the demand for it increases. And eventually there will come a time where the demand for freedom will, accept, will exceed the demand for the leash. That's, that's, that's what I believe. That, that's what I'm counting on. Uh, we'll we'll see you next week uh, on Is Daily Thursday, and we'll also see you. I'll see you next Monday for Is Daily Monday with uh, uh, Professor Rambo. Good night, everybody. Go ahead. Good night.